Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video I want to show you a trick I sometimes use to get a cool pulsing rhythmic reverb effect in Logic Pro 10. The end result will end up sounding something like this. So you can choose to include the kick or not include the kick um, in the final bounce or whatever in the final mix, uh, whatever you prefer. But the way we're going to do this is we're going to use an aux track with a bunch of processing on it. Um, we're going to use the pitch shifter plugin. We're going to use the channel EQ, the tremolo plugin, the space designer plugin for reverb. Although you can swap this out for any reverb you want, and then the compressor plugin for the sidechain pumping ducking effect. Um, all right, so let's start from scratch. I'm just going to click on that uh, aux track and delete it completely. Um, and we are going to completely start from scratch. So without all of those effects on there, all we have is a piano uh, with like piano chords with a little bit of reverb on it. And then just like a filtered out uh, ultra beat, just doing like a quarter note kick drum. So let's listen to what this sounds like with no effects on it. All right, so pretty simple. The first thing we're gonna do is on the piano track, we are going to create a new bus send. So on our sends here, you're gonna click on our one of our available sends, go to bus and choose an available bus. So all of them are available, so I'm just gonna go with bus one. Logic will automatically create an aux track for us. So I'm just gonna call this like the effects track, whatever you wanna call it. It's automatically inputting bus one. I'm gonna go ahead and option click on the send amount and that'll set it all the way up to its basically to unity um, and we're going to start with the pitch um, the pitch shifter plugin and the only reason I'm using the pitch shifter plugin here is because I want the wet signal to kind of sort of be a blend of a signal that's up an octave and then the actual dry signal itself so I'm going to basically just solo out the effects track um, let's add the pitch shift plugin on here it's under pitch and then pitch shifter and what we're going to do with this is we are going to pull these semitones up to plus 12, so it's up an octave. Now you can play with this tuning if you want to go down an octave, you can do that too and get a completely different effect. Um, the mix I'm going to put about 50%, so 50% down an octave, 50% up an octave. And for instruments, the timing mode tends to sound better on pitch tracking, so I'm going to put that on pitch tracking. And uh, let's give that a listen. If you want to make the uh, wet signal and dry signal match up a little bit better, you can uh, click the latency compensation button and that will compensate for the latency of the pitch shift. So it sounds kind of weird right now. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to scoop out some of the high end and the low end with the channel EQ. And this is more or less just to make sure that the wet signal doesn't have the full bandwidth of the original signal. So I'm going to scoop out a good chunk of the low end, scoop out a good chunk of the high end. I really want the effect to be more subdued and ambient and not too bright in the background. All right, there we go. The next plugin is the Tremolo plugin. This is under modulation Tremolo down at the bottom. And for this, we want the Tremolo effect to pulse in time. We want both channels to pulse in time. By default, the tremolo plugin, uh, the left and the right channel pulse at different rates. And they also start at a quarter note timing, so I want this to be an eighth note. So I'm going to pull this up to an eighth note. I'm going to pull the phase of the right channel down to zero degrees, so both channels are in phase. I'm going to pull the smoothing down to about half. And then the depth can stay all the way down. There we go. If we want the front end to be a little harder, we can pull the symmetry down a bit, or softer, you can pull it back. I'm going to pull it down just a touch. All 
All right. So the next thing I'm going to add is Space Designer. It's under Reverb, Space Designer. And you can try a whole number of different reverbs here. The one I'm going to use, just for example, is under Large Spaces. Um, it's under Plate Reverbs, Shimmering Plate. And I'm going to pull the dry up to about 75% and the reverb up 75%. Normally, you, on an aux track, if you're using reverb, you pull the dry all the way down, the reverb all the way up, or most of the way up. But since this is like a musical effect and we've already kind of processed the signal before it hits the reverb, I still want to hear just a touch of the dry signal in there. So I'll put this about two-thirds of the way up and I'll pull the reverb about three-quarters uh, three of the way up. So let's listen to that. Cool. Now you could just leave it like that and just go with that as your effect. Let me just mute the kick out just so we can hear piano and the effects track. So that's pretty cool, but I want to add one more element of sort of dynamics uh, to this. So after the reverb on the effects track, I'm going to add the compressor. It's under Dynamics Compressor. And what we're going to do is we are going to sidechain input the kick drum and use it as a sidechain compression source to create a ducking effect. So every single time the kick hits, the compressor will compress more and duck down the reverb level. So on sort of the upbeats, you'll hear the um, the effect, the reverb effect. So I'm gonna go up to side chain up here in the upper right corner and choose the kick drum as our side chain source. Now one little thing just to uh, remember, if you're using Logic 10.3, you can now select MIDI based tracks as side chain sources directly. If you're using 10.2 or earlier, I believe you have to render this down as audio and then have the audio be the sidechain source. Uh, to do that, you can right click, you can say bounce in place, or you can press uh, control B and that will also do the same thing. All right, so now let me just uh, choose my effects track. Every single time the kick hits, the compressor plugin is going to compress. I'm gonna turn off the auto gain, pull the makeup gain just a touch, pull the ratio up a bit, like two to five, two and a half to five, pull the threshold down to negative 30, and I'll pull the attack time up a bit because I want the effect to sort of be kind of slower. So I want the attack time of the ducking effect to be a little bit slower. And the same goes for the release. I'll pull that up a little bit too. So a little bit slower release. And uh, let's give this a listen. Cool. So now let's listen to that. I'm going to mute the kick. Now remember, if you mute your track that's your sidechain source, you'll still hear the effect. So you'll still hear the effect of the sidechain compression on the effects track. So let's give this a listen. Now there's all sorts of different ways you can play around with this. You can try swapping the compressor uh, in between um, some of these other plugins. Like maybe I want to put the compressor before Space Designer. You can give that a shot and see what that sounds like. Um, for that, you'd probably want to pull the dry signal down a bit more. Um, you could also try a different uh, a different space designer setting as well. Um, maybe we'll go with something that's more of like a hall setting instead of this echoing plate. Let's try um, let's try the large choir hall. Pull the dry up about two thirds, the reverb almost all the way up, and give that a listen.
or my favorite thing to do is not to use Space Designer, but to use a different reverb plugin. Uh, one of my favorite plugins I've been using a lot is the Valhalla Shimmer plugin, which is essentially a reverb plugin, but it it really, really is awesome for sound design and creating some really cool sort of um, really out there ambient um, sounds. So let's uh, let's give this a listen. I'll just tweak a couple settings up and we'll give this a listen. And if you're not hearing the tremolo effect enough, you can actually try putting the tremolo after the reverb as well. And another way I've played around with this is to put Space Designer or any reverb really before and after the tremolo and compressor. Um, and you can also throw a uh, delay in there too, if you want to make this really, really ambient. And uh, especially if you have like a synced delay, you can create a pretty cool uh, synced uh, delay effect. All right, so there you go. This is just a little trick I wanted to show you guys to create a cool pulsing rhythmic reverb effect. Let me know if you guys like these little synthesis and sound design videos where I just show quick little tips and tricks on how I create certain sounds that I like and just cool little ideas I've come up with uh, with processing in Logic. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.